Good day, good day. How's it going? Welcome back to Samsung Sam Kitchen, where I bring to you budget-friendly recipes with sustainability in mind. So this week we're going to be talking about cauliflower. I'm so so glad that it's cauliflower. At least I think it is. It's cauliflower season. It's back. So cauliflower is one of those food that has gained so much popularity recently. It's super versatile. You can roast it, turn it into soup. You can put that in salad. The neutral flavor nature of it just means that it takes on so much flavor. It's such an amazing food. So recently I've been craving fried chicken and let's be honest, I'm always craving fried chicken. Thought this is the perfect opportunity to turn them into super crunchy, uh, buffalo wing or whatever, fried chicken, whatever you want to call them. And what's even more exciting is it's 100% vegan friendly. So with today's recipe, two different flavors, one with a bit of an Asian twist as classic salt and pepper. The other one, homemade buffalo sauce to turn it into a bit of a vegan buffalo chicken wings. So that is what I want to mention today. If you're into food, if you like money, if you like to save money, if you think you got friends or family who can be a little bit smarter with their money, I can help them spice up with their cooking and help them save some money here and there. And that's what I'm here for. All right, enough of that and let's get cooking. To start with the whatever you want to call it flour, good job Sam, starting with a really bad dad joke. <laughs> We're going to need a cauliflower, some plant-based milk to keep it vegan friendly. Here I've got some homemade oat milk, some flour, some salt and paprika to season our flour. That is all we need for the cauliflower. So very, very simple. For some homemade buffalo sauce, we want equal part of garlic and chili, some vinegar to give it that acidity, some neutral oil to replace butter that is commonly used in standard recipes. You can replace your vinegar with some pickle juice for some more funky flavor, but that is totally optional. I forgot to mention that I added an onion, but that is all we need for the sauce. Put them aside and get started. Before I started cooking, I quickly whipped together some oat milk. I have a dedicated video on how to make it, which I'll link it down in the section below to check it out later. It is my go-to plant-based milk, super easy to do. Back to our cauliflower, remember to always work with the sharp knife. Compared to a dull knife that slips, a sharp knife is so so much safer. Grab a head of cauliflower, get rid of the leaves on the bottom, but uh-uh, don't throw them out. You can roast them, use them to make stock, or stir fry, perfectly, perfectly edible. Collect them in a bowl or container and you can store them in a the fridge for a few days or into the freezer, forget about it and wonder WTF this is in a few months time. Now onto the cauliflower, we want to cut straight into the stem on the bottom. Stick your knife in and it should be easy enough to pull the little stems off. We want to keep the forest as intact as possible, so be sensible when we're cutting into the stem. Depending on how many people you're cooking for, about a third of a head was plenty enough for myself. The little trees we pulled off earlier, yes, that is what I'm going to call them for the rest of the video. They are still quite big. To make sure our little trees are cooked through with crispy golden exterior, we're cutting them into bite-sized pieces. Leaving them too big, we won't be able to cook it through on the inside. Cutting them too small, they'll just burn into ashes. Make sure to cut from the stem and split the forest from there to minimize any breakage. Just speeding things up a bit here while I power through the rest of it. Now, we have a bowl of cut up little trees. We'll put them aside for now while we prep the milk and dredge. Two bowls here, one for wet and one for dry. Grab the milk we made earlier. Just enough to coat through our little, uh, nah, I'm done with calling the stupid name, cauliflower. Pinch of salt to season. Optionally, to make it coat better, I added some chia seeds to thicken up the oat milk. Give it a good stirring. It'll take about 10 to 15 minutes to hydrate and thicken up the liquid. In the other bowl, I added in about 80 grams of flour and 10% of that in salt, which is 8 grams. About 4 grams of smoked paprika to season. You can add in garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, and etc. I'm keeping it simple and budget friendly here, so that will do for me. Now both are done. Grab our cauliflower. I loaded half of them in the flour, coat through thoroughly. Shake off any excess flour and lay them out on the rack. The flour, milk and flour kind of three-step process is very important to ensure the coating stay intact with the cauliflower. If we dip straight into our milk, most of the liquid will drip off due to the aquaphobia nature of cauliflower. For better frying result, this applies to almost everything. Always coat it in flour first. Wet, stick to dry, stick to wet. Once our first round of coating is done, our chia and milk liquid should be well ready to go. The consistency has definitely thickened up a bit. Next time, I might try grinding up the chia seeds first to see if it works faster. 
Grab a piece of our cauliflower into the mixture. Make sure the whole thing is soaked and then into our flour. Coat the whole thing through with flour and back onto the rack. It's a good idea to keep it dry in a wet tent for this process to keep the mess to minimum. The process makes me so happy. I'm almost forming my little production line and it's so very satisfying. Once all of the cauliflower are dredged, head over to the stove and we want to put on a heavy duty pot with some neutral oil on medium heat. Stick a wooden chopstick in to test the temperature. Once it's bubbling, it's ready to fry our cauliflower for the first time. When frying anything, Make sure to gently lower your food into the oil instead of dropping or throwing them in. There are very few things in this world more dangerous than splashing crazy hot liquid everywhere. Selling guns to 18 years old is one of them, but I, I digress. By lowering your food into the oil, we are the one in control. Give the cauliflower a flip about halfway through. Once they reach a golden color, they are good to come out. Grab them out and leave them on a cooling rack to rest for now. While the cauliflower are resting, we can move on to the buffalo sauce. Grab a small onion, cut it in half and get rid of the skin. Finally dice it up. Finally chop up our chilli and garlic and throw everything into a mortar and pestle. If you're making a bigger amount, blending the sauce in a blender will be slightly more efficient. Crush everything up in the mortar and pestle. Add in a pinch of salt to help turning it into a paste. Move over to the stove and we want to fry up our buffalo sauce with some fat here. The oat milk mixture were just sitting around doing nothing so I thought I'd just chuck them into it to thicken up the sauce because why not? Dash of vinegar and a touch of sugar to finish it up. Now the sauce is done, it's time to fry our cauliflower for the second time to get that maximum crispiness. Fry until golden brown. Into your mixing bowl and it's time to season. Look at these beauties here. Pinch of salt. MSG and some white pepper, a bloody killer combination. For the other half, it's our buffalo sauce. Nice and sticky and the smell of it, you really really gotta try it. Into your serving bowl, some garnish to jazz it up a bit and that is it. The cost brand down is as below, one third of a cauliflower is about 6 to 6 cent. 80 grams of flour at $2.20 a kilo equals to 17.6 cent. 20 grams of salt at 90 cents a kilo equals to 1.8 cent. 200 ml of oat milk at 22.5 cents per litre equals to 4.5 cent. One small onion, four cloves of garlic and four chilies is about 15 cent. 200 grams of neutral oil at 35 cents a kilo equals to 7 cent. Altogether, the serve of two weight cauliflower goodness costed us $1.11.9 cent to make. Good luck to even try to get a piece of fried chicken with that price. All right, and there we have it. We've got our cauliflower two-way done over here. Some buffalo on one side and just some classic salt and pepper with a sprinkle of MSG on the other side. I honestly can't wait to dig in. But before we get there, I just want to show you the crunchiness. This has been sitting here for about 20 minutes now, but it's still bloody crunchy. Yeah, alright. Going to dig in and just let you know how it tastes like. I'm gonna start with the salt and pepper. The double fry exterior just hits a spot. The cauliflower on the inside is cooked perfectly, nice and soft, in contrast to the crunchy exterior. There's something about salt and pepper with deep fried food, especially say salt and pepper squid and back in Taiwan we've got salt and pepper, popcorn chicken, they just work so well. On the other side we've got our buffalo and see how it tastes like. Packs a punch, slightly spicy but it's bloody delicious. The amount of buffalo sauce recipes that I've browsed through on the internet, 99% of them ask for some form of store-bought hot sauce which just doesn't make sense so over here some make do recipe with all of the key flavor ingredients and it just works honestly you can't be happier with this result everything in this bowl is vegan friendly no milk no egg is required that is all i wanted to say i'm going to finish this before it gets too cold thank you so much for tuning in if you enjoyed the video give it a like and consider subscribing every two weeks i have a budget friendly but also sustainable recipe coming out to you so hit that subscribe button and i have more coming your way thank you so much and i will see you in the next video.